My next guest today is best known as the former weather forecaster for ABC's Good Morning America. He's currently the weather forecaster for ABC KGO TV in San Francisco, and also the author of several children's books and an advocate for children's literacy. He's a great guy, a great friend of the program. Please welcome to the Wonder on the House Party, Spencer Christian. Uh, hey, David, what? thank you. Thank What's you, up, thank man? You. Thank you, and you're, right, you're in San Francisco, is that right? That is correct. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. I've been out here for, oh gosh, about 20 years now. Did you always know that you were gonna be a weather forecaster as a kid? I, no, no you know, as, as a kid, I was, um, I was always a communicator. I was always in front of uh, the class, you know, running for president or making a, a speech or reciting a poem. So I always felt that I was going to do something that involved communication. I didn't know if I wanted to be a lawyer or a professor or even a minister. I considered that as well. Uh, but I was, in, I was in college in the late 1960s when there was a lot of social and political upheaval in yeah. the United States. And I was so fascinated by that time, at that time, by the way the news media covered all of these profoundly important events that I decided I wanted to be a journalist. So I became a news reporter, and that was the way I no kidding. initially came into the business. But, um, and I had no, no dream uh, or even desire of doing weather in, in the early stages of my career, but I was offered a chance to fill in on weather once early in my career uh, because our station had lost its weather person. I had done a lot of science reporting and I understood the dynamics of weather. So I filled in for two weeks and I was asked to stay on full time and that became my ticket. Amazing. What's your most memorable weather experience you had to cover? And yeah. as a, a weather reporter, I had, I had many exciting stories to tell. I have covered 14 hurricanes. Uh, whenever there was a major hurricane uh, approaching uh, the Atlantic coast or the Gulf coast, Good Morning America would send me out days in advance because you know hurricanes move slowly so you can track their, their path and get me in, in a location where we expected the storm to make landfall or to come on shore. And I can remember broadcasting live when the wind gusting around me was at 110, 115 miles per hour. Crazy. Reef flying all around, there's flooding. Ah, those are kind of scary but exciting times. Uh, you're such an advocate for so many great things, especially literacy. Yeah. Why is literacy, in particular children's literacy, so important to you? It's so important to me, I think, because of the role that literacy played in my life. You know, I, as I mentioned, my, my parents taught me to read when I was very young, about four and a half years old. And uh, it just, reading just stimulated my curiosity about everything. And it gave me uh, a, an understanding of and an appreciation for all the fascinating things in the world around me. So I've always wanted to share that passion for, for literacy with other kids and, and stimulate an interest in reading. So I visit lots of schools, uh, all ages, all grade levels, uh, to talk to kids about the importance of books, the importance of literacy. And I always encourage kids not only, not just to read, but to read the, if you don't enjoy reading or you don't want to pick up a book or you're hesitant, uh, what we call a reluctant reader, then read about the things that really interest you. If you like sports, read about sports. Yeah. You know, uh, if you like, um, I don't know, uh, TV comedies, sitcoms, read about TV sitcoms. But pick a, a subject that interests you, that, that fascinates you, and start reading about that. And that will probably trigger a greater curiosity and, and cause you to go in and, and read uh, and, and venture out a bit. Another thing that's so important, and we're talking about it today at the house party, is the census. And I know you're a big advocate for that as well. Why is it, why is it so important to you? Oh my gosh, David, the census is so important for, for so many reasons. You know, it's important for all of us to be counted because the census determines uh, it, how many people live in our local communities, how many people live in your state, and that determines the services we get from the government. It determines how funds are distributed for schools, right. for hospitals, for, for fire departments, for police departments, for roadways, for, uh, oh, for all kinds of services, for housing. So it's really important uh, to get an accurate count of the people in your local community, and the people in your state. It also determines our representation in Congress, how many representatives we'll have in the House of Representatives. And children are usually the, the group that's most likely to be undercounted in the census. That's right. So that's why it's important for kids to talk to their parents or their 
grandparents or their family members, whoever they are, and say, we need to be counted. The census is important. Well, thank you for that message and thank you for all that you do. Spencer, you are the best. Thanks. Thank you, David.